Welcome to episode one of Manufacturer Wars, where I want to find out who is the best small manufacturer. We're starting out with a company that you've seen me throw on my channel before, and they actually just released a new mold that I got like 25 minutes ago. So this whole bag is filled with just Birdie Disc Golf Supply. So I had to round up all their discs that I own, and we're only going to play with those today, doing three things. One, Birdie or Die style, meaning I limit the number of houses I'm allowed to throw anywhere from one to six, depending on what an internet dice tells me I can do. And if I can't Birdie with one of the molds, I'll have to give one of those discs away. I do have multiples of some of the molds, so I only have to get at least one Birdie with the molds, and bogeys do count against me, but hopefully we don't have to talk about that. Secondly, we're going to play a full 18 round at my home course, Owl's Den. I'm typically shooting double digits here. We're going to play the same course with each brand that we do this with and I'll tell you the criteria for small disc golf company when we get on to hole one and then finally at the end of this video because we want to see if we can find out who the best small disc golf manufacturer is I'm gonna do a tier list for every single disc that they have from this is a great disc everyone should bag this to I would bag this all the way to ooh, maybe don't throw this disc but first I gotta snag all their molds got the marvels first these are my special little bonanza blend ones I might start to try to throw more though and today We'll test that out. But I gotta come down to my whole little birdie section right here. And we'll pull out a premium Marvel. I have an Ultra in the bag. We're gonna steal one of the strikes premium because I miss it so much. And then over here, I also have some older, some of the new Infinity Strikes. I think they're gonna be a little more overstable. Not fully sure though. We got some color glow ones too, but I don't need that many strikes today. And we'll pull out the Reaches, which I really like. This color glow feels so good. And then this one is Products, which is awesome. And I think very good for my forehand. And with the new rise that literally just got delivered to my house, which apparently these are the same plastic. This one, the white one just turned out softer because of the white dye. 5402 instead of 5303 of the Ultra. And seems like a, sh a thinner feeling MD4, which I have right here. You can see they're, they're definitely similar. When this came out or when I saw first like any pictures of it, I was like, oh, it's an MD4. But there's a little bit more roundness on this bevel compared to this, which is a little flatter. This also is a little deeper, but somehow feels more comfortable than the rises. These just came and sometimes obviously discs are flat and then they'll end up being not quite as flat because like the post office. But I think it might be the feel of the bevel or the rim just feels like it's more this way in your hand. Whereas this feels a little more evenly distributed in my hand. And so the MD4 is slightly more comfortable, but this feels better on a forehand. So I'm interested to see if this is a good little straight forehand disc. Let's get the whole one and let the manufacturer wars begin. I hope we can finish this round, but uh, Baby's coming soon. And this is what constitutes a small company for me is that they have between four molds, putter, mid, fairway, and driver, and they have to have at least one of each of those. And they have up to 13. And the reason I limit it to 13 is because these are all the discs that I bag and there's 13 molds total. So I figure there's gotta be a cutoff point in the upper end. So four to 13 molds have to make putter, mid, fairway, and driver. If you know a company like that and you think that they're the best small disc golf company out there, let me know. And I'll make one of these videos to see if they are. They'll probably all be like titled the same. Cool. All right, hole one, I'll go ahead and throw real fast because uh, apparently they're looking for a disc. And you know what? We'll just start out with my marble. Ooh, hopefully this is good. Coming in, 276, hole one. Oh, baby. Oh, it's getting stable. Also, no two off the top. I can't always cheat. Also, they also have to make a, some sort of putting putter. So they can make a premium putter, but if there's a putting version as well, they have to have that. Real quick while I wait for these guys, let's roll to see how many hyzers. I knew I wasn't throwing one on hole once. So we didn't have to worry about it. I'm hoping I get six plus today. Oh gosh, one hyzer. Okay, okay, okay. That's great. That's that's so awesome. We'll try out the rise. This guy seems like an MD4. 180 grams, 5402. Good amount of ante. Hopefully it fights out. 375. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it does have some hookup. Flies very similar to an MD4. That's pretty sweet. Good little first flight. Hopefully we can get our first birdie, but I would hope with these discs, I'm shooting between seven to 11 under. I'm definitely rushing a little today just cause I got these guys here, but I also think the baby's gonna come today or tomorrow. Nice. There we go. Birdie with the rise. Check it off the list. That is the problem with bogeys though, because when I play birdie or die style, a bogey is typically just the loss of a hyzer, meaning I can throw one last hyzer. The only problem is I only have one hyzer today. A hyzer being defined as a shot where you're using height to gauge the distance. So spike hyzer, stall hyzer, a pushing hyzer through a gap, even if it just stays on hyzer angle, that doesn't count as a hyzer for the purposes of this challenge. Since I only have one hyzer, if I use that, or if I bogey and lose that, if I bogey again, one of the distance in the safe zone 
has to get taken out. So I'm pretty stoked on uh, getting that first birdie with the rise. And I will tell you what, if for some reason it feels a little puddle toppy. I think it's just because this rim is a little deep. I would love for it to have like a little bit more dome. But I really, really like the feel of it in my hand. I can see myself throwing this thing a lot. Hole two, let's try to save the ultra. It's only 215, but I'll throw a simple little flat to flex forehand. Over it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Maybe should have been a marble turnover. No. Dang it. One through three, not the hottest start, but I played this course worse for sure. Hole four, 303. We're gonna try out this ultra again, just on a turnover line. Basically same shot we just threw, but now the backhand version. That's what we like. Man, I don't, I don't know why I took the ultra out of my bag. I think I thought I would just get kind of get away with a like zone A2, but the A2 is just so much more overstable and not quite as like glidey. Oh, I don't have a towel. Smart, smart. Good job, Anthony. Good job. If it rains, only bring chalk bags, don't bring towels. Two down, two discs saved, three to go. If there's ever a manufacturer I find on kind of the top end range of disc sell allow, closer to 10, 11, 12, 13, that will definitely make the birdie or die style of this a little more difficult. Hole five is 375, right down there. I think I would try this infinity strike. Hey bud. But I think it's gonna be a little more overstable. So I'll throw this premium first. It's a little head left to right, I think just flat through the main gap. And then I'll see how this flies in comparison. Oh, that was so close to being so perfect. That one likes to flip a little, so I thought I really nailed that. Oh, oh, okay, it's not actually that much more overstable. Oh, a little bit. Oh, no, it's perfect. It's so perfect. Should have just trusted myself. It definitely drifted. Oh, this is kind of a head left to right again. Similar win to a couple holes ago. Maybe just more of a straight left to right. I actually like both of those shots, so I can't really complain. But the second one is inside of the circle. Yeah. Going down that middle line, pretty tough to do on this hole. Honestly, with my stupid lack of towels, kind of glad I brought so many marbles. <laughs> we'll pitch up the premium real fast. Kind of ante it into the ground, but it's a little wetter, so closer to the hill. Just like that. Yeah, this shot was pretty perfect. I think I will actually try the strike on a forehand. It's only a seven speed, but I think that means kind of, oh, it's pretty headwindy, wow. Okay, it was definitely just left to right on the last hole. A little flex, but mostly flat. Get there. Oh, shorty. Oh, I thought that was gonna be a little better. Try out this other one. Okay, they can definitely handle something. Not that that's a lot, I mean, it's 260 feet, but that's pretty nice. No. Okay. All right, got a birdie with the Marvel. 227. Can't use a hyzer already. Do have a tailwind, which is nice. So I think if we throw flat to flex right at it, maybe still give it a chance to go in, but mostly just try to birdie. Oh no! Luckily I threw it so short that it's gonna be fine. The only two left to save are the reach and the strike, which I think we're gonna save for the back nine to save, because uh, these next couple holes are probably better for the mid ranges and putters. And I wanna throw this rise some more, because I actually really like that first flight. I threw this one before, we'll throw the white one. Look to see if there's a difference. It's only 283 with a tailwind, so a touch of flex at it. Get there. Oh no. That wasn't bad, it was just a little short. That's better. Oh, <laughs> same water area. And if you throw the Ultra and you wanna see how that kinda is different. Okay, actually pretty similar to the Ultra. That was a little interesting. I know the Ultra 
is very beaten. I bagged it for like a whole year. So I think the rise is, it's not too far off, which is honestly a little bit interesting. Like I don't really know why a company would come out with two overstable mids back to back. They're not even like approach discs. You'd think it'd be more like conducive for sales to come out with like a flippier one. But yeah, I don't know. I don't have a disc call company. I just speculate on the internet. But that does bring me to who kind of makes these discs. And I know it's a couple different companies. So for one, the Reach, you can probably tell, is made by Gateway. When we throw up more, you'll be able to see that. The Strike, I believe is made by Legacy, as well as the Ultra and maybe the Rise. I don't really know where the Rise is made. And then I think the Putter is made by EV7. This is all things that I've heard that I don't know for sure. So don't quote me on it. Quote Reddit or something, I don't know. Oh no, I kicked muddy water onto this guy. Crazy thing though is four down through eight, kind of back on track. If we get this last one and be five going into the back nine, I think that's a pretty good place to be. Honestly, the great thing about Denver is you can just leave the discs like this and they'll be completely dry very soon because of how dry and hot it is. I think where these might be different is that this might be more forehand or, and this, or backhand and this might be more forehand for me. This definitely was pretty overstable when I threw a backhand. Um, and the Ultra is more of like what I would throw forehand. It's a little more of a forehand feeling disc just because of the shape. And this one feels a little more backhand. I think it's because there's a little more roundness of the shoulder, where that one's just kind of flat all the way across. That being said, we're going to throw this red one again. Try this inside line. I always like hitting this because it's so pretty when you do, but it's not an easy line to get right. It's only 241 feet. Got it. Yes, dude. Oh. That's why I love it. It's so pretty to watch. Twice it's luck. Oh, baby, it's not lucky today. Ultra, it's luck. Luck, 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 luck. But I think that is a difference. The rise is much more comfortable on my backhand. Ultra, much more on my forehand, I think. But we have to forehand the rise. Maybe as our upshot on the next hole, hopefully. I'm so stoked I got that park job. I think I've tried to hit that line in a video a bunch of times. And I've sucked at it, most of them. Nice little spread, second rise, first rise. And all rise for the birdie. Looks like we had a storm earlier. Looks like we got some damage. Whew, I'm kinda glad this basket seems to be unscathed. There's another position over there that might've gotten taken out. But five down on the front nine. Only have to save the drivers, and the back nine is much more of a driver heavy course. Pretty happy with how this is going so far, and I'm pleasantly surprised with how much I like the rise compared to the first time I picked it up. It didn't feel the best, it felt like a little worse than the MD4 in my hand, as I told you guys in that initial segment. But the more I have it in my hand, I it does feel slightly, slightly lower profile, which you could tell when you look at them side by side. And I'm really liking the stability on the back end. I don't know if I'd bag it, but I'm liking it at least for today. We'll go reach. Oh gosh, the tailwind's good today. Uh, that might be really good. Also might hit the last trees. I really like how clean those reaches come out of my hand. I've especially liked them when I reviewed them over on Banana Froth for my forehand. Because they're just a little straighter than your kind of destroyer solid disc. They remind me a lot of the interval. I think more of an 11 and a half speed. The reach I do think is closer to that 12 speed, but it really is like a negative one two disc. Not crazy fade, not crazy under stability, just pretty mellow overall. It's still within the realm of possibility for me to shoot my record, which is 13 down at this course. I can shoot 14 if I get them all. Looks like we smacked this big tree. I knew I didn't turn it enough to get around the trees. And we still can't throw a hyzer here. So I think we'll just do a touchy little ultra backhand. Oh, it's too straight. Not a bad kick, but I should have brought out my beefier ultras. Dang, still got a circle one look. Nice, let's go. We have two par fours left, and at this point, only one more disc that we need to save, which is the strike, which is like my love of all these discs. I just haven't really thrown them much recently. There are a couple holes that are really good for the strike coming up, so I think I'm gonna hold off until then. There is one forehand, one or two backhands. Whew. I'm just glad we're saving our hyzers for now. I'd love to try the rise forehand on a hyzer, which I might do as a second, but first shot, I think we'll go premium Marvel up the middle, See how stable that thing is? Get the skip. Ooh, bad skip. Oh yeah. Oh my, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh, my little hyzer flicks. 
Mm, well, I do like that. Right now, I have a stability of Roman, which is kind of the new baby run, which hopefully will be coming out tomorrow, maybe, maybe the day after. Whenever the baby gets here, is my official drop of those. But I have a stability of those. It's the new Proto Glow ones, and they're very much similar to that, where they have some hookup at the end. They're a little flatter, very good on a forehand. On my back end, I can hyzer flip them. I don't know if I can really hyzer flip these, but I haven't tried to throw them super hard. That was so close to skip it in. It is exactly pin high. That had to be inches away. I don't know if that's the stability of Discout wood bag in general, but I do like the feel of it. So it would be between the MD4 and the Rise. I don't really think I could choose one right now and I'm not paid by either of them to say either of them. So just edge a circle, drop it in. Oh, too much drop, not enough in. I think we're gonna try the broad reach on this one. 720, hole 12. But this one, we're gonna try to go big. Road, I always play as OB. I want to throw maybe over that first tree, just on a lot of angle, but a lot of height as well. This one I remember being a little more understable, and this is the first time I've taken out Broad's Reach where it's not been insanely windy. I waited for it to be insanely stormy instead. Oh, it's actually really flippy. I'll get back. Oh, just enough. Wow. That was a little more understable than I thought it'd be. Probably could have put a little higher, but I think I just snuck back in bounds off the road. I saw it skip on the road, and luckily it didn't hit one of these big old puddles. Otherwise, I'd be screwed. I will say, it did have some really good push, though, because that position is like 512. This is so close to not being safe, but <laughs> it's right there. And uh, wow, let's try to rise real fast. You know, we'll try the forehand, actually. Keep it safe the whole way. Oh, baby. Oh, wow. Definitely straighter than the Ultra on a forehand, so it might be similar stability, less torque resistance, if that makes sense. I think the difference is in how much you have to spin it to get the stability. I hope that makes a little sense, but my backhand, maybe four or 500 RPMs more than my forehand, and the stabilities look relatively similar on the backhand, but the Ultra is definitely more overstable on the forehand for me. Interesting though. Well, at this point, I'm kind of glad I didn't try to park it. Holy crap, that's gross. I cannot miss this putt. Wow, what luck. I'll take a par there, holy crap. Throw the new Infinity Strike. The basket is in line with that tall tree out there. So a little flex, a little bit of height, mostly flat, and I'll let it stall into the basket. I think that's gonna be pretty good. I've kind of been putting better with my blend today, surprisingly. I guess it's not like sticky hot out. And these tend to stick to my hands when they get stickier just because of how soft they are. It also means they stick to the chains pretty well. There we go. Rise up, baby. Oh, I'm too stable. Well, that's nasty. Yeah, this course is gross right now. Ugh. 270. One day I want to try to pure that gap. No! 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 Oh, a little more flip, that's so good. So it's pretty close to a good shot, but also not even close to there. Get through somehow. Oh no. Oh wait, what am I talking about? That's 12 feet away. Three more holes, gotta get two. Straight down the gap, 345. 346, actually, so it's more impressive. Strike, we got a bunch of options. Hit the gap. This, I think they're all honestly pretty similar. This one just might have the least amount of fade. They might be the same stability, just with more fade, if that even makes any sense at all. These all have nice dome. I think we'll throw it. I have to throw this one flat to slight flex. The up and down from here would be legendary, because the shank was also legendary. Stayed a little too high in the shot instead of really being over it. Surprisingly and unsurprisingly, the rise is kind of the perfect disc for this. Not too overstable like the Ultra might be on the back end, but I can turn it through that gap left to right and hope to leave it high enough that it still gets some fade. Any sort of look inside the circle is money. Too low, get a crazy skip. Be hard packed. Oh, that's a putt for sure. Angle, really good. Height, not good. What's up, dude? Dang, I thought it was my wife. I thought it was baby time. It wasn't. It's just, I was gonna say birdie time, but it's just par time. Oh, never mind. It's bogey time. What the heck? 
I ought to practice more dead on. Circle two putts. I love swinging them in. Problem is I never swing them in enough and always miss them right side. Back to six. Jeez, only one down on the back nine so far. And normally I'm pretty even front to back, even though this one is harder. There's eagle opportunities on this hole. And we still have, oh no, we don't have a hyzer remaining. Cause the bogey took it out, so. If I throw a hyzer, one of the discs is unsaved, or if I bogey, so. Get off the tee clean here, main objective. 460, up and to the right. Reach. Color glow. Sorry, Rod, a little more overstable. I heard the blue ones are the most understable of his reaches, so. Just get off clean. More than clean. Come on. Come on. Oh, I needed broads. Dang it. <laughs> I thought I got the eagle finally. <laughs> okay, there's got to be some sort of tailwind out there or something. Those got way too overstable. I was so... I, what? I'm so confused. I thought I threw those, like, honestly, perfectly. Happy with both those shots, though. Should be an up and down for a birdie, and it looks like eight down. If I can get the last hole and not throw any more hyzers. Oh, go, go, go. Oh, dang it. A little too touchy. Uh. Oh, my gosh. Well, pretty poor play today so far. Let's get back to seven under. Can't wait for that dad strength to kick in so I don't shoot silly little rounds like this guy. <laughs> it's windy. At least the sun is like making this a really pretty scene right now. It's like the perfect exposure. So if I could have this for every video, I would. Except for the wind. The wind sucks. Headwind. Big time. I think I'm just going to rip a rise. Honestly, right at it. At this point. Oh my gosh. Well, shake the last shot. It's always fun. Ugh. As long as I don't bogey, I'm... I'm not gonna say I'm happy, but I'm not as pissed as I could. Soft bid for the throw in to finish. Just can't juice it too hard. Oh, emphasis on the soft. I didn't even get it to the basket. Nice and easy. Tier list time. Six down, not great, not terrible. Quick tier list, let's go. First off, we got the Marvel in my plastic. I'm gonna say the S tier up here is basically Everybody should bag this disc. This disc is great. At least consider it A tier. Great disc. I would probably bag it or B tier. Fine. You know, it's just a disc. Does the job, but there's a lot of dislike it. C tier, kind of a little bit below average. And then F tier is, ooh, probably shouldn't be bagging this. I would honestly put the Marvel, even with mine, in B tier. I think it's fine. Good putter. I would love to say A tier, especially it's got my little stamp. I'd love to put it in S tier, but I'm going to be realistic. B tier. Rise, honestly. There's not a lot of this in this kind of category. I'm kind of between high B and low A. I'm going to put it in A tier. I honestly really liked it today. I really like the stability forehand. It also was nice. Ultra, I also, I think I'm going to put that one at the top of B tier because it's a good one, but I don't think it's anything absolutely ridiculous. I think this is more of like your just Buzz OS, your MD5. There's a lot of discs that are kind of in this category, but above the Marvel for sure in B tier. Strike, I'm going to put at the top of A tier. I would want to put it in S tier, but after throwing it today, I really love it. I'm really debating putting it in S tier because it's one of my favorite seven speeds ever. The Infinity ones, the ones I threw today, just kind of didn't do the same thing for me. The premiums, I think the one that I have in the picture, S tier probably, but overall A tier above the rise. And then the Reach, I think I'm going to put that below the Ultra in B tier. So everything's good. Nothing is absolutely phenomenal, but Birdie, really fun company. Really appreciate them and sending me a lot of the stuff. Check it out if you want down at Infinitus. And uh, six now, that's the mark to beat. Baby should be here very soon. Hopefully the next video is the baby video, but might not be. Nobody knows, especially not me.